Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using data in Gatsby. Now, in the last tutorial, if you're following along with the course, we looked at grabbing data about the site. So inside of our Gatsby config.js file, we had this site metadata in here, and we stored two values about our website, title and author. And then on this index.js page, we ran a GraphQL query, and then we were able to access that information from inside of our JSX. So over here, we have this website that's pulling the title of the website, and it's pulling the author of the website. This is a great way to uh, use data and store data about your website, but it's kind of limited, right? In other words, you're only able to pull the data that you can store inside of this site metadata object. So using Gatsby, we can actually access other types of data. And one type of data that we can access is data about the files in our website. So one thing that you might be curious if you're building a website is, what are the other pages? Like, how can we get information about all of the pages on our site? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that. We'll be able to use GraphQL queries to figure out information about the different pages on our site. Therefore, using that, you can build things like directories or you can figure out you know, what pages are in what directories and what pages are doing what. It's really powerful. So the first thing that we want to do in order to do something like that is we need to install a Gatsby plugin. And this plugin is called Gatsby Source File System. And basically what this plugin is going to do is it's going to allow us to access information about our file system. So I'm just going to paste this in down here into my terminal. And you can go ahead and copy this. It's just npm install dash dash save Gatsby hyphen source hyphen file system. So we want to run that and we're going to let node package manager install that onto our computer. Once that's installed, now we just have to tell Gatsby about it. So I'm going to come over here into my Gatsby config.js file. And inside of here, I want to create a new attribute in here. And you might already have something like this, but it's going to be plugins. And so it's just going to say plugins colon, and then this is going to be an array. And so this is just an array of the different plugins on our site. And I want to add in the plugin that we just installed. So you want to put this code in here. And it's basically just saying that we want to use the Gatsby source file system. And then we're passing it some different options. So we're passing it, uh, the name is source, and then we're passing it the directory name forward slash source. So this is basically just telling Gatsby where all of the files on our website are located. And then it can go there and you know figure out what we have available. Once you update your Gatsby config JS file, you want to restart your development server. So I'm just going to do that. And now that this is restarted, we can actually start using this Gatsby source file system. So I'm going to come over here into my web browser. And I'm going to open up this GraphQL URL. So it's localhost colon 80 or 8000 forward slash three underscores and then GraphQL. And this is called GraphIQL. And it's basically just a user interface for uh, running GraphQL queries. So we can test out GraphQL queries inside of here. What I want to type out is just open and close curly brackets. And if you type in, um, like start typing in A, then you should see this all file attribute should come up. And if you type in F, you should see that file come up comes up. So this file and this all file, these both have to do with the sort that with the plugin that we just installed. And so because we installed that plugin, we're now able to see these two guys. So I'm just going to click on all file. And then what you can actually do is just click if you're on a Mac, you can click Command Enter. If you're on Windows, you can click Control Enter. And that's going to automatically fill out this query for us. And so you can see it's all file, edges, node, and then right here we're looking at ID. So right now what we're doing is this query is grabbing the ID of all of the pages on our website. So if we look over here, you can see that it's pretty much doing that. So the ID is basically just the path. So we have this index.js file, uh, we have this counter.js file, we have this other index.js file, this page two file, and page three. And those are all the pages that I have over here on my website. So this is just looping through the file system for my website and just printing it out. 
And in addition to printing out the ID, so you can print out ID here and you can also print out a bunch of other stuff. So if you just click control space, then this will give you an option for, it'll give you like a drop down with all the, the, the options. So we could search for the parent, children, pages, um, internal, source instance name, absolute path, relative path, extension. So why don't we search for extension and we'll search for relative path. So this will give us the extension of all the files and the relative path of all the files. And I'll run this query. And you can see that most of these are like JS files and then we have the relative paths for all the pages. So a query like this can be really useful because not only does it allow us to loop through all the pages on our site, but it allows us to access different information about all the pages on our site. Like you can see, we have all these things here. So if you were building like a breadcrumbs navigation, for example, you could use this parent or this children attribute in order to do that. You can use these absolute and relative paths to build links. So you could build like a table of contents or something like that. So using these, all file queries is a really great way to you know, make your website more powerful. So I'm actually gonna give you a demonstration of building something like a navigation list. I'm gonna go over here to my index.js file and this is just like the home page of my website. And I'm gonna be kind of pasting some different code in here so you can just kind of follow along with what I'm doing and then sort of implement your own version of this. So the first thing I wanna do is just make sure that I have this data attribute set up here. So I wanna pass the data into my website. And I'm just gonna get rid of these two guys. And I wanna change up this query. So right now this query is accessing the title and the author of the site metadata. But we wanna change it up so we actually want it to be the query that, or similar to the query that we ran over here. And the query I'm gonna be using is gonna look like this. So I'm just gonna paste this in. And you can see it's just what we did over there in that I gra in that GraphQL. But now we're accessing relative path, pretty size, extension, and birth time. So this will give us some interesting information about all the pages on our site. And then up here in our JSX, we can actually grab that information and use it. So once again, I'm just gonna be pasting some code in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And basically what I pasted was a table. And this is just a basic sort of JSX table. I, up here I have the table head and we have these table headers which are basically just displaying all of those uh, attributes. And then inside the table, I'm accessing um, all of these attributes. So I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm looping through the results of the all files query. So that all files query, if we look over here on the GraphQL, you'll notice that it returned an array. So it returned in a, an array of all of the different pages on our website. So what I'm doing over here is I'm looping through all of the elements in that array and I'm mapping them to basically table rows. So rows, row, rows in the table. So each one of these like no dot relative path, each time through the loop, that's gonna represent a different relative path of a different page on the website. So if I save this file, and I head back over here to my normal website, you'll notice that we have a table that's just listing out all of the pages in our website. And this isn't formatted perfectly, but you, you kind of get the idea, right? It's giving the relative path of each of the pages on our website, the extension, how long ago it was made, and then the pretty size, so basically like how big the file is. And this is just one example of being able to loop through all of these pages. So when you're able to access all of this information about the pages on your file system, it really makes it a lot easier to build out certain navigational elements of your website and also just to have information about the different pages on your website. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.